The Inspector General of Police has recommended the suspension of Drambi Vandi, the trigger happy assistant superintendent of police, who is said to have killed a Lagos based pregnant lawyer, Valanle Rahim. In the Senate today opposed the timeline for the Apex Bank's decision to execute the withdrawal of old Naira notes from circulation. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm sure Kimale in Abuja, let's tell you that it's now 58 days and we're still counting to the 2023 elections. We're looking up to the very moment Nigerians will be able to elect their new leaders. You need to get your permanent voter cards because no permanent voter card PVC no voting. So get your PVC and let your vote be counted. So we're still counting tonight. Well, the National Assembly today has passed the 2023 Appropriation Bill at, uh, put now at 21.83 trillion Naira. The appropriation was passed on both chambers of the National Assembly, indicating an increase of 1.32 trillion from the uh, 20.51 trillion budget proposal presented by President Mohamed Bouhari. A breakdown of the budget indicates an allocation of 96... 967 billion for statutory transfers, 6.6 trillion for debt servicing, 8.3 8, 8, 8 trillion for recurrent expenditure, and 5.9 trillion for capital expenditure. Meanwhile, the Senate also passed the 2022 supplementary budget of 819.5 billion naira. Well, let's tell you also that the Senate has stepped down the restructuring of the 22.7 trillion ways and means request of President Muhammad Buhari until more documents were presented to the Senate for further legislative action. The upper chamber today approved that 819 billion be excised from the 1 trillion naira ways and means to fund the 2022 supplementary budget by the Ministry of Agriculture is to get 69 billion. Before stepping down the request during plenary that earlier caused uh, some kind of disagreement between uh, the senators. And more actions uh, in the National Assembly, especially in the Red Chamber, where the senators asked the Central Bank of Nigeria to extend its deadline for the facing out of the old 1,500 and 200 naira notes from January 31st to ja June the 31st, 2023. The recommendation follows a motion by a senator representing Bruno South Senator Ali Ndume, who raised the alarm over the January 31st deadline. According to him, the notice given by the CBN is too short, considering uh, that a few banks in Borno and Yobe State in the Northeast region are unable to allow people in this state to lodge the old notes in time to meet the deadline. All right, tonight, two major issues get our attention. We'll be hearing from the Nigerian police force. Uh, the IG has moved for the suspension of uh, the alleged killer cop in Lagos who shot dead a pregnant lawyer uh, on Christmas Day. We're hearing from the Nigerian police force and also about the election. Uh, can we hold an election in 2023 because of the um, suspicion that about 40 uh, communities or areas in Nigeria, uh, due to the security concerns, we may not be able to hold elections. We'll be hearing from the Nigerian police on that. Again, um, uh, the second half of the program, we're speaking with Mr. Akin Oshuntokun. He's the new director general of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council. and will be telling us about a task that has been asked to take on after taking over from Dr. Doni Okupa. Stay with me, everyone, but first and foremost, let's check out your political roundup stories. Uh, 
A group of supporters of the APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu in Ondo State have staged a solidarity walk in Akuredo State Capital. Addressing journalists, the leader of the group, Mr. Solomon Oladuni, says the presidential candidate will bring impactful development to the country if elected as president. A governorship aspirant of the All Progressives Congress in Cross River State, John Enno, says he has put an end to all litigations in respect of the governorship primary election between him and the party's governorship candidate, Basi Otsu, and has decided to work for the success of the party in the 2023 general election. Addressing journalists in Abuja, Senator Enno says his decision comes after the presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, intervened in the crisis rocking the party in the state, where he appealed to all members of the party to sheath their swords and work together in the interest of the party. The occasion of the town hall meeting of Tuesday, 20 December 2022, at the instance of the presidential candidate of our party, Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu in Calabar, has gone down as a watershed and turning point for me in seeking further redress in the matter. The leadership crisis within the African Democratic Congress is far from over as the legal advisor of the party, Mr. Peter Soyewole, has described the party's caretaker committee as illegal, just as it confirms filing an appeal against Tuesday's judgment of the Federal High Court in Abuja, which barred Mr. Ralph Wonsu's lead executive from extending their tenure in office. Mr. Oyewole says the ADC does not have a caretaker committee as the Tuesday judgment did not recognize any individual or group of persons as members of the caretaker committee of the party because there were no such prayers before the court. The People's Democratic Party in Ekiti State has inaugurated the Presidential Campaign Council with Mr. Gundikwe Makonjola as acting chairman. Mr. Makonjola is expected to pilot the campaign and mobilize support for the PDP presidential candidate at Tiku Abubakar in Ekiti State. The party's candidate in the June governorship election, Bisi Kolawole, had earlier rejected his appointment as chairman of the campaign council, saying he would not work with those who jeopardized his chances of becoming governor in the last governorship election by working for the Social Democratic Party. However, with the former governor Ayo Fayashi and his camp not showing favorable disposition to the PCC, party leaders insist the train must move on while reconciliatory efforts are intensified. And in Ogun State, political maneuvering and realignment ahead of the 2023 general elections have continued as hundreds of members of other political parties have been putting forces together with the state's chapter of the PDP for the purpose of the 2023 general elections. Addressing the defectors at the ceremony in Apiokuta, the state capital, chairman of the party in the state, Sikuru Lahi Ogundele, assured them of equal opportunity and the need for unity of purpose to ensure a resounding victory for the party. Thank you so much, everyone. There you have it. You've been served with your political roundup stories. Let's get to it. Today, the Nigerian police force has come out to say that the killer cop in Lagos, as uh, Drambi Vandi, has been put up for suspension by the Inspector General of Police. Um, the man was said to have shot dead on Christmas Day, uh, Mr. Bolanle Rahim, who was coming back from church, the cop and his team were said to have been trying to stop Rahim and our family members as they drove back home from a church service. Let's get some more details on this incident and perhaps how the police is handling this situation. I'm being joined by the Force Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Police Force, Mr. Muyiwa Adejabi. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Oh, sure. Good evening. How are you? Um, thank you so much. Um, Compliments of the season to you. Now, you realize Nigerians are very outraged and very unhappy with this scenario, which in the first place is perhaps not in fact the only incident, that perhaps the, that the case of uh, the woman on the Christmas day, Bolale Rahim, became a bit more popular than the others, which I'll come back to that police division, which has now become a very notorious one, for those people who are living in that area in Lagos State. Um, uh, the statement implies that the IG has recommended the police officer for suspension. Um, so the, the, the consideration is that does the IG restricted in any way from meting out uh, a full weight of the law on this person or what exactly is going on? Is the investigation concluded yet? Well, before we, we, we start discussion fully, let me just uh, give this message from the IGP to Nigerians and the whole world uh, to commiserate with the family of the deceased, uh, our colleagues, friends, and those 
who have been affected by the incident. So we are pained that the unfortunate incident occurred at this crucial time. It's quite unfortunate. And that's the message of the IG. That's number one message. The second thing is, whatever it is, there's going to be justice. And don't forget, like I, in the statement I made yesterday on Twitter to people when we were having discussion about this matter, I made it known that it's an ESP. It's not uh, an inspector, a member of the rank and file, that we can just say, yeah, you have suspended, you are this, you are that. No, there is a procedure to follow. And number one procedure is for the Inspector General of Police to recommend to the Police Service Commission that this uh, officer should be suspended. And the suspension is for us to have um, that neutrality, the ability, the platform to have proper investigation, or further legal uh, actions that might be taken against uh, the officer who pulled the trigger. Uh, we are not here to be saying who is at fault or not. It's a clear when we have a mother case, every other thing would need to uh, subside before for mother case is quite unfortunate, and we are not happy about the incident. Uh, like I said in a statement today, that the the IGP who has seen this incident as an unfortunate one, uh, we did it yesterday when he condemned the act that is condemnable in totality. Uh, and the Commissioner of Police, uh, Lagos State, uh, CPI, Abiodun Alabi, has been mandated to do thorough investigation about it. The officer uh, is in detention, as I speak with you. And I think by now we should have received the interim report, not the full, not the detailed report of the incident. We need to work on something. We need to have uh, uh, the facts from Lagos State Police Command. Apart from what we have in the news, there must be a document to even tell us, black and white. Uh, this is it, this is it, and this is that. So we have the interior report. Uh, by now, we should have received the interior report uh, from Lagos State Police Command. This will help us to have more facts and see, uh, possibly to see what we are going to do. But definitely, it's a murder case. And we want to assure Nigeria that, like people say yesterday, that I want to conceal the officer, we want to do this, this is our nature. It is not in our nature. The police today are stand to be quoted or corrected anywhere. It means that agency that we always fish out the erring ones in the police, and we fish or punish them accordingly. Because we hand them over Mr. to Mr. the Mr. law Mr. to take the course. Perhaps the, uh, the impression Nigerians have about your colleagues are the fact that uh, you even hear some police officers say, I will kill you and nothing will happen. I mean, you... But many things have been happening to you. No, that's what I'm saying. You agree I mean, with me. Many things have No, no, you can tell Nigerians what has happened because it does look to a lot of Nigerians who are very pained about this is that we have a lawless set of police, some lawless police officers. I mean, we cannot have the same brush to paint all police officers. They are very good and professional police officers, sure. no doubt. But they have very bad ones within the rank and file of the police who are very terrible and are bringing a bad name to the Nigerian police force. So you agree with me, you are, you are a lawyer, and you must have done literally about sociology. This is an anomaly theory is always there that when you have a society, more than one or two people, you are bound to have deviants. Who will always be deviant? It's a natural thing. So they can't rule out the fact that because we are in the police, we wear the uniform, they want to rule out the fact that we are human beings. But the question beings. of impunity is the case. If there is a system that is being tainted with impunity, that is where the matter is. That should anything happen that is untoward, will the system be able sure, to there's fix no, it? There's no impunity. There's no impunity in it. If you say I'm going to kill you. And nothing will happen. Let him kill first and see what happens. We cannot cover such a thing. We talk a mother. The law, the law, the law, the constitution says everybody has right to life. Even if at all you want to take somebody's life, there are conditions. When you want to use your firearms, there are laws, guidelines, principles. First of all, 237 is there. United Nations BPFF, basic principle for use of force and firearms is there. If you fire, you use the firearms outside the provisions of these principles or these treaties or these laws. You are on your own. You okay. are going to be held responsible, so, and the law will take a course. Let, let, let's take this matter one after the other. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the priority for us tonight is this matter. Any other one is secondary. So there are about three or so police officers involved at that incident, isn't it? It's a, it's a thing, but the, the, the person who pulls the trigger 
You be irresponsible. No, no, I'm just, I want to hold all of them responsible. You know, it's now not, not you, you need to give Nigerians a, be, a, a benefit of the of information. You need to give them information so that they can believe in Nigeria. They went after an operation. So it's a teamwork. They all of them signed for, for guns. Uh, Vandy signed for his own gun mm -hmm. and he used his own gun. The outcome of the gun is what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. So he should be the one. No, no, I'm asking that the, the, there are three of how many of them were in that team? I think there were three of them. So sure. Well, he's the only one in custody right now. No, he's the only one. He's the only one. He's the only one being investigated. He's the only one being investigated. So what is the? Because he's even the most senior person. Out of the, out of the he's the, the most senior person out of the team. So what are we hearing? What do we know now in that in that in that investigation so far? No, it it, it is a is a clear case that the, the fact in issue is somebody fired and somebody died. Who fired? Been identified, no argument about it. But the only thing is, we need to follow the process. Don't forget, trying police officers, uh, taking them through processes of design processes is a legal matter that you need to follow so that you not give loopholes to people like you. And the, 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 the lawyers that will come and say, see a loophole, whatever you want to do, we need to be patient enough, let due process be followed, let the law be considered. And we're going to do the need for all we want is what? this man has been identified. Mm -hmm. It is clear. Then the, the next thing is we are to suspend the man. The commission or the police will suspend the man so that we can, if at all he's going to court, you can't take somebody who is serving. As a, as, as a police service commission you, accepted the suspension? No, the letter has been the letter has been said. This commission would not, if the headquarters, if the IGP, the headquarters is saying. This is what you want for social reasons. Mm -hmm. The commission, I'm sure, they, will not, say, they so, will not say no. This is so, not the first time we've been doing that. We know that um, a, police, a uniformed man uh, who is a senior officer will have to go through a certain procedure uh, before, uh, which is not really the same thing for an average citizen. Uh, so give Nigerians an understanding of the procedure that you are talking about, the process of justice. No, for, for, his own case, for, his, for this case now, Vandy is an ESP. The, the, the IG cannot say go. Even with this case, if you want to prosecute, even to the rank and files, if you want to prosecute anybody, you must. Is that how you dismiss the person? Or you suspend the person before the case is start to court? So in his own case, the first step is he has been identified, he has been detained, investigation has been carried out, an interim report has been forwarded to Ross in Abuja, and we have written to service commission recommending that this officer, then the ASP, should be suspended so that every other legal procedures can go on or, um, or hindered. And these are the procedures that we need to know. People have been saying we delay things. We don't, we, we, we need to follow all these processes so that we would not uh, run foul of the law. And even as a process, as a process, it is important for us to follow this one after the other. Because if at all they charge him to court, don't give him the room to challenge even our process. So we must do everything according to the provisions of the law. You know the reason why some people perceive that there is some level of impunity within the police force? And I'd like to ask you, are you aware of a certain case within that same division? Which one, please? Start with the case of Iganio. Okay, that was shot. That was a shedded. Yes, the, the, I was I was aware, and I think this, the, the 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 policemen. Don't let me use the word culprit now. The policemen who fired Ganiyo are, are in panty, as I speak with you. They are in panty, and the matter has been investigated. But you know, at times when we have issues like this, let me quickly say this: the family of deceased at times always uh, slow our processes down. In the situation where some people prefer negotiation to legal actions. If they say, okay, we want settlement, amicable settlement, it's going to be unfair to that man who is the suspect now to say, okay, you want to settle amicably, then you want to charge him, you want to charge him with all, you want to dismiss him. It's going to be tantamount to job with your party. So I think people need to understand pressures at times we face. I've seen a case where somebody will say, okay, my boy, my boy is dead, he's dead. If I take this policeman to court, what, what is the outcome? Give me money, let me go. 
So people should need to understand and to see what we face but in most cases when anyone you have... is not a civil case. It's not a civil case. It's criminal. Any, yeah, it's a criminal it's case criminal. which the state, the behoves on the state to it's be able criminal. to take up this matter. It's criminal, so settlement see, or no settlement, Even if the, case, if the case goes to court, I've seen situations where the family of the deceased went to court to go and file a motion that we are not interested in. No, but it behoves on the attorney general who has the right to be able to withdraw. So even if the family let's says fight, we are not let, going... Let, let's fight, let's it, fight that. Let's fight that. If people are talking of delay in processes, that's where the delay will come from. But at the end of the day, a mother case is a case against the state, not against an individual like that. That's okay. I, so, I, like I mean, that's some point. The case now. will still go to court, yeah. even if they still file a motion that they don't have interest. It's not left to the judge to decide. But why carrying out these processes, investigation, and the likes? They slow us down, and they give us issues at times. But in this case, this particular case, this extant case, we are going to make sure justice is done. The case, of course, will go to court. And don't forget that the Lagos State Government too has shown interest that the AG will lead prosecution. So it's not only the police that are going to lead. In the case of Ghanaian, what are you telling us tonight? No, we, that we, it is we, not the case to, that have been abandoned or jettisoned no, no, not abandoned, or not dropped. Or... As I yesterday, as I yesterday, the CP said, because I think they have about two or three or four uh, officers in that team. So it's not only one like this case that we're handling now. So the CP said the, the DC Panty, that's DC CID in Panty, will forward reports to him. And of course, if there's no need, because I think those one involved are uh, inspectors that one. The AIGs on two may take decision mm. on those ones. We don't need to come to the IG level or the service commission level because uh, there's no ASP involved in that uh, particular incident. So they will handle that one. All we need is, like I told the PRO Lagos yesterday, is that let people know actions you have taken on issues like this. All right. if, you don't, if you don't tell them what we have done, they will think the police has come as usual. We want to sweep this under the carpet. We don't want to do anything. We don't do anything with impunity. Yeah. If, you, if you commit an offense as a policeman, you pay dearly for it. Nobody will tolerate that. And the law, the, the police act is clear about it. Constitution is clear about it. Criminal laws are very clear about all this. So we, we, I want people to always understand us from this angle that we don't keep cases. If like you are giving this. Nigerians assurances that uh, what we have seen in the past, because when we wonder what became the out of the outcome of the answers, has the Nigerian police really learned anything from the outcome of the answers? Both sides have learned so many things from answers. Not only the police will learn from answers. As the police learn the real anything? answers, not the one, not the second dimension. No, no, answers. I'm saying the real answers. The actual protest is against then, brutality and the hey, extra judicial. At some point in time, are you going to demarcate the real answers? We're, we're and talking the about the real answers. issue of police brutality, arbitrariness in police uh, civil engagement, and uh, extrajudicial killings. All this, that is the real, real essence. These, these have always been addressed by the police. Don't forget, Shim, you have seen Nigeria, when we decided, the first headquarters decided to dismiss some policemen for misbehaving, either by assaulting people, trapping on people, fundamental human rights, checking on phones, using cutlers to beat people, we don't kill some of these cases. Because if you do, it's not going to help us. It's even going to be more a cancerous to us in the system. If you are keeping men so, like this, they so could Adejabi, be dangerous to us in the system. So we don't keep them. If you say that you have learned from it, what reforms as the police internally on the gun that will give Nigerians the assurance? Because in any form of policing at all, all of world over, the trust of the people in the police makes the work of the police easier. So if Nigerians don't trust the police, your work is going to be it's, tough. It's not related to Nigeria alone. Trust services is a, is a global thing. Yeah, so, so I'm saying it's that a global thing. So what, but, but, what can you tell us but, one thing that has come in form of reforms that has happened after the, in the post answers? There are so many things. So just tell us one. Just so many things. The, the disciplinary measures put in place to sanction our airing officers is very, very key. So it is not easy for a father to put down his son for sacrifice or to face the law. How many people can do that? Even as a father, in Nigeria, many of us keep our children when they do wrong in society. But for us, as a responsible institution, the MPF, we always fish them out and we don't cover them. And I think when I became the PRO, even before now, during the, the former first PRO, Frank Mba, we've been rolling out statistics of men dismissed, suspended, reprimanded for one thing or the other. But that's so we, it's part of reform. But that's not so going to, to solve know. the problem, Mr. Adejobi. In my son, if your, no if your officers are found taking India hemp, um, taking uh, 
uh, dro uh, drugs and uh, seeing them at the corner losing their belt and being drunk. Uh, videos of such are uh, in, in the public domain. The issue of whether or not there are psychoanalyses being done on your officers frequently, uh, a breathalyzer tests and all of that, are, are you doing such a things? Did, have you put in place um, body cameras to ensure that there is probity, there is accountability, and there is clarity in the job and the, in the roles of the police officers? Have those, those kind of measures been sure. put in place? Sure. You don't need to be reactive on issues like this. We have been proactive enough in making sure we have men who have mental alertness to do this job. At the point of recruitment, the IGP has always released money to our medical department to go around to the whole country. All states, 30, 36 states plus FCT, making 37 commands, to go and do assessment for all of them. Psychological assessment, mental alertness, everything. Led by the Commissioner of Police in charge of medical FMO to go around and do this. It's expensive, but we need to do it so that at the point of entry, we know those who are on the job. But don't forget, Darwin's theory, we always say, law of adaptation. When you continue to do certain things, you get attracted to it. On the job, many might decide to be deviant. It's a, it's a personal thing, not That's a the question I'm asking. It's a personal on thing. On the job, not, not entrance. The IG will not go and tell a policeman that go and smoke in there. No, it's but when you thing. see that your officers are taking up some vices, is it not the duty of the system to be able to check that? For example, is it too much to have breathalyzers to test whether or not your, your, your officers are acting yeah, on that? They are all, they are all, in fact, under this administration, all our medical facilities have been upgraded. And every command has a standard medical center, medical facilities to take care of all these things. And let me say this. So it's a standard the procedure has, now? The IGP has reactivated the family support unit. This family support unit is to take care of PTSD, mental disorders, psychological imbalances, and the likes. And we do this on a regular basis, free of charge. Whether you are under NHIS, you are not under NHIS, or far you are a member of police family, you have access to these facilities, you have access to this um, equipment, and of course, they're going to assess you and write reports on you. In fact, let me, let me tell you that recently, one man was caught in the video that was carrying on, dancing at the party, misbehaving, firing here and there. And when the case came to, to headquarters, we referred the matter to medical section. Mm -hmm. And the, guy, the, the best thing was, let this guy go. He was recommended for, for, for compulsory mm -hmm. retirement. So Jim, all these things Mr. Put Mr. In place Mr. Are Mr. to sanitize yeah. the system and to make sure we have that people-oriented policy structure in Nigeria. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of lessing, I mean, because we are, we are totally out of time, and I have uh, two questions before you go. I think there's a lot of lesson and a lot of introspection that the Nigerian police force needs to take. And I think that that acceptance needs to be taken on behalf of the force by you that if any life is lost under your watch, there is a need for introspection by the Nigerian police force. And I guess you are aware of that. And that acceptance needs to be taken first and foremost. And I'd like to ask you, is it safe to conduct the 2023 election? It's very safe, Phil. We have put things in measures to make sure we subdue the activities of non-state actors who may want to create problems across the country. We have done our operation order. We've done trade analysis across the country. The IGP has been having meetings with head of operation, department of all agencies, the military, GMI, intelligence, community, all of them on a regular basis. On 17th November, we had one. On 13 December, the IGP had another one. Before then, IG is a co-chairman of ISS Interagency Continuity Committee on Election Security, and we have been meeting on a regular basis. So we have taken the bull by the horn to make sure that we subdue activities and decimate the activities of these non-state actors. You might want to foment trouble or to put 2023 general elections on that threat. Can no you way. tell us, are there areas in this country that Presently, election may not be able to hold because of security situation. I don't think before that time, I don't think we're going to have... You would have solved it. It's not as if they, they don't exist. Yeah, they are some... They are difficult These terrains. Are, are some multiple that we just need to identify. And we have been arresting some of them that are giving us problems. We've been arresting them, we've been charging them to court. Those, in, at least across the country, we have a reasonable number of people that we have arrested for electoral I'm offenses. saying the, the jurisdiction where it might be difficult for election to, to happen I don't, I, because I, of security that, for, situation. For, for, for now, for now, I don't think there's 
any place have been left out, we are right. going to have. With the help of all agencies, the, the CDS came out to say the other time that every place will be liberated, every place will be conducive enough to conduct 2023 elections. And we are maintaining that, that with all what we put in place, we have a strong fold. We have a system. We have one family, the security mm. community. We do the needful. And all stakeholders have been involved in this, right. uh, in this uh, our, our efforts to make sure we have a seamless electoral process in 2023. All of them, political parties, party chairmen, electorates, both active and non-active electorates, all of them have been involved, and I think we're going to get it right soon. Olumuiwa Adejobi is the first public uh, PRO of uh, the Nigerian Police Force. Thank you so much, Indy, for coming tonight. Thank you, Shum. I appreciate your time. Yeah. We'll take a break, everyone. When we return, Chief Akin Oshutoku, the Director General of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Organization, joins us next on the role and the task that has been saddled with and the future of the Labour Party ahead of the 2023 elections. That's next for our conversation. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, two days ago, there was an announcement that there is a new Director General of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Organization, and that is Chief Aki Oshuntokun, who succeeded. Uh, Dr. Donio Cooper will resign uh, uh, lately as the Director General of the Campaign Organization uh, due to uh, the case he had in court. I'm now being joined by the new DG of the, PD, uh, the Peter Obi Dati Presidential Campaign Council, Chief Akin Oshuntokun. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it's indeed very good to see you again. Apologies for the other day and thank you so much for making. I know you're coming straight from the airport to the studio. Um, how does it feel taking over from your friend, Dr. Okupe? Well, I mean, it feels good. I mean, look, it's a sense, it's a bittersweet. Uh, experience. Uh, bitter in the, re in the respect that he, he had to live in those circumstances. And of course, you, you had the judgment. That was the first judgment that I had that was, was essentially as competing, you know, the person standing before him, before her. She said it was an honest mistake. That is a judge, not the lawyer of the defense. So, I mean, the party in such, uh, in such circumstances, for me, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. You know, uh, it deserves more than a better exit like that. But nonetheless, life must go on. Um, <clears throat> what I'm buying, I'm, I've been, uh, but I'm also back to familiar territory. I've been back to, I'm used to uh, presidential campaigns. I led to before in 2003 and 2007 as political advisor and as a campaign coordinator of um, President Goodluck Jonathan in 2011. So, and your, um, your party won that at that time when you, when you were actually All the involved. times, all the times. So uh, this time around, anything? Of course. I mean, that's, uh, if, if you want to... If you are the are, winning man. If you, you are, are in numerology, if you have a talent in numerology or, <laughs> or magic or astrology, is left for you now to decipher, you know, the meaning behind the meaning. So, Achanto means win. It means success. Success, indeed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, I mean co a coincidence, of course, that uh, both for yourself, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kukwe, and yourself, uh, Akin Achanto are very close allies of uh, Chief Olucha Gomba Sonjo. Allies? Well, <laughs> you are well, yes, you are correct, but. Uh, is a father figure. That's a better description of the of the relationship. Is a father figure to us, not not as, uh, as allies. Mm. You know. So you, you know the inference uh, some are putting into this appointment that this is perhaps uh, an Obasanjo slot. <laughs> well, look, assuming that what you are saying is correct. Okay, am I not qualified for the job? Am I not competent for does it, it? Does it take away or the fact merit? that it's an ambassador slot? Mm, I don't know what you mean by ambassador slot. I don't know whether you have to ask the presidential candidate, my principal, whether it was an ambassador slot and that was how he was, the, 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 uh, the position was filled. Don't forget that I was uh, the zonal coordinator, the immediate zonal coordinator of the campaign in Southwest. So this is essentially an elevation. It's not that I'm, I'm just joining the, the campaign organization. Mm. But if you said that, it's a person just look. Well, 
uh, people have uh, different perceptions and you are at liberty to say so I can't depress us. There, there, uh, there is an intertwining nature of politics and permutations. Um, uh, President Obasanjo has uh, some, uh, at some fora had endorsed, given some tacit endorsement to uh, Mr. Peter Obi. And uh, incidentally, um, someone who I've been working with President Obasanjo for a long time, Dr. Doyin Okupa was leading the campaign and he steps aside. Another very uh, close and long time uh, uh, ally of uh, President Obasanjo again takes over. So, I mean, astrology, permutation, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, maybe no, one is not far from the truth. No, listen, I mean, the, the first question, that the, the essential question, you know, that you want to ask, you know, is what I'm bringing to the table. Forget about who recommended me for whether I'm, I'm fulfilling the slot of somebody. That's really, I mean, that's not an issue. It's my capacity and competence to do the job that matters most. I mean, if Obasanjo recommends a very competent person uh, who will lead the party to victory, so why should I have any issues with that? So I don't see, for me, it's a non-issue. Whether I, am, I don't know. Do where you have the backing of President Obasanjo? What do you mean? Do I, you will have to ask. I, was, I didn't appoint myself. No, but, but I'm but, asking. Listen, I don't know. I, I, are you, are I, you, I, I mean, if my boss asked me to represent him at an event, I have his backing. Listen, so listen, I, are listen. you, what I mean, is President Obasanjo fully backing the Peter Dati campaign? Yes. Are, yes. You rep are you a voice of President Obasanjo in the no, campaign? No. So you are, mm. you are acting on Shontoku? Yes, on my own Your own man. Yeah. Uh, are you a full member of Labour Party? No, no, I don't know what you mean by full member of the Labour Party. You are a former member of the PDP, I assume. Or are you still a member of the PDP? You see, all this, I'm, married, I'm not longer a member of the PDP. Look, in the first instance, with this, I think people get these things wrong. A presidential campaign organization is not the same thing as, as a party, Iraq, as a party, you know. Uh, when I was up, there is a sense of deja vu in what is going. When I was appointed the director of publicity in 2002 by President Obasanjo, I was not a member of PDP. Uh, but if I take the, if I take the responsibility once I assume the office, then of course, uh, effectively, I become a member, you know, of, uh, of of the Labour Party. So to that extent, you know, I'm a member. Of, uh, are you still running for Senate? No. Have you dropped, officially dropped that toga? I don't know what you mean by officially. I've abandoned it, if that is what you want to say. And because, I mean, yeah. look at it. Uh, you, your name is still on the INEC uh, Listen, let website. Me, let me tell you something. As of yeah. this minute that we're talking. The campaign office has issued a press release in that respect. Look, the question you should ask yourself is, what law have I breached in accepting the appointment? What law has the presidential candidate who appointed me has breached in appointing me? Look, this, this, look, I can't help anybody who wants to pursue notoriety as a way of life. You know, the man who is doing this one is supposedly the National Publicity Secretary of the Labour Party. Ask him, why would the National Publicity Secretary of a party do that to his own party? So I, for, it's a redundant question at, 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 at any rate. It's, it's of no consequence. It's of no consequence at all. Whether you look legally, constitutionally, it's very frivolous. If you're canceling uh, the legality, what about the moral burden? There's no moral burden at all. That you're, no moral, that you're, if, you're if, enlisted as a well, candidate, see, senatorial candidate in another party, yet in another party you are leading the campaign. Well, Isn't that a clash of interest? No, that? no, no, no. It is, it is a cost. It's a higher, it's a higher order of priority, priority. What I'm doing with the OB campaign, joining the OB campaign for me, is a higher national priority than uh, any other aspiration. You don't think that you, you, uh, you, uh, the people that are watching or the supporters of your party or that of the ZLP deserve a full disclosure when you're you abandoning it? I mean, you were on the ballot. Not, no, look, I don't you, think... You were on the ballot with ZLP. It's irrelevant. Now, don't, it's irrelevant you think so? Not, you less. don't think it's a moral burden for what, you there is no to moral disclose that? No, no, not at all. I am of the ZLP listen, listen, as a listen, candidate listen, now. Listen, listen, by my own estimation, as a citizen of this country, who has a realistic appreciation and what, what, what we need to move Nigeria forward. It's not, you can't compare an aspiration to, to be in the Senate 
you know, for what the position I'm, I'm going to occupy or that I've occupied. So that is the question you should ask. All these kind of, you know, platitudes and unnecessities of no consequence to me. I do what you define that going for a Senate in Zelim is, is a higher priority for Nigeria today. I, I don't, I, I definitely, is, that, that, that is, that's, that, that Perhaps is. Perhaps uh, it's just a question of uh, some moral issue that you needed to unpick Look, go, stop in the box. Moral, let's, let's, uh, no, it, it is actually, no, no those, are, those are the facts, Mr. Listen, 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 no, no, that, I mean, not at all. Uh, if you say there is no legality, listen, no legal uh, conundrum, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there is another issue, which is the issue of morality. Okay, when, that, when America was going to kill Osama bin Laden, uh, what should it have considered morality? What is it of a higher order than what they, what, what they were doing? Look, you people, you should context when you want to make assessment. If you want to put me on the, on the hot seat, I'm all well and good by it. Mm -hmm. But what you say must have some consistency in logic. I cannot define in Nigeria today, there's no way I can define my priority, a moral, pro political and moral priority, better than what the path that I followed. So I don't know what you, what your own position is that. Mm. Uh, both of us are on the hot seat because I am, I'm not uh, um, putting out my own thoughts. I'm putting out the question as a journalist, which I'm constitutionally permitted to do, now asking you who are in the public eye, uh, the moral body that you need to be explaining to the people who are following. There's let's, no moral body. Do, I don't have any moral uh, body. No, so. no, please. Uh, so let, let's go. No, no, no. Stop using that word. I have no moral body. I'm stepping to a higher sacrificial position. But have you publicly denounced that listen, one listen, before taking up another? I don't need to publicly de de declare it. There is no need for me. It's a redundant position. I have the perfect freedom to decide what to do at any minute. So I have not breached any, any uh, legal position. And of course, what I'm doing, the step I'm taking, right, is of con mo a greater moral consequence for Nigeria than that. So stop using that word. Uh, you, you might be offended by it, but Mr. Shiro, I don't think there is anything wrong in that. But let me ask you, uh, uh, perhaps a bigger issue here, and uh, which the burden that you'll be carrying for the next few weeks, at least for the next 58 days or so, and is how Peter Obi can win this election. Do you see a chance? Well, I mean, I, look, uh, several polls that have come out, seven or eight, not less than six, right, have projected him as a winner, including people who have no vested interest whatsoever in the outcome of the election, like Boomberg, you know. So why would you say that he has a chance? Do I think that he has a chance? Well, for the sake of Nigeria, he has better had a chance, have a chance. Because we are standing, you, you made a video clip at one time where you are very angry. Nigeria shouldn't go continue like this, 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 this and that. Interpret what you said and relate it to what we have now. Are the other two candidates Nigeria should look forward to if this country is going to move forward? Are those the ones that you should... You should? What, is the, what is your mandate bringing to the table? I mean, what mandate, solutions are you bringing to the Nigerian mandate, predicament? I'm executing my mandate by being with you here, you know, to, 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 to tell you, I mean, to tell the Nigerian public through you the choice that they have to make that, that is beyond them. It has become an existential issue. As Nigeria is an, an, an inflection point. You better get it right this time, or the country is gone away. Yeah. I mean, look. I mean, look at even the campaigns that we have witnessed. Because especially that of the APC presidential candidate. Now, is that the kind of president Nigeria should look forward to? Or even the PDP? You have a principle. Of, stab of stabilizing the country, political stability. And this is power rotation, right? And a candidate of PDP, right, regardless of that, you know, simple logic that came out, initially I thought maybe this, this is too ridiculous to happen. But here we are. Now, how does that compare to, when you look, Back at our political, at the political background of Nigeria, how do these kind of choices? The APC candidate also, because of uh, very cynical, you know, chose another Muslim from the north to be his running mate. Now, of course, you know that it would be highly hypocritical for for anybody to say that Nigeria has not become I mean, a region has not become a very polarizing and divisive issue in Nigeria today. So these are the choices that you have. 
compare it to when you compare it to a candidate. The, the, the difference is clear. What capacity does your candidate bring to the table? Well, you know, he has, a, he has an antecedent. He was governor of Anambra State for eight years. So just look at his record. Is that enough? Oh, yes, of course, it is enough. I mean, because I know you and I know how fluent you are when, it, when you hold your pen on how versatile you are when you do some other things, does that mean that you can solve Nigeria's problem? The question I'm asking is Me? if your candidate has the capacity to fix Nigeria's problems. Where do you define somebody's capacity? I told you what the assessment you can use that is public. It's not the that only former governor that is running this. Listen, in this but he's the, one, he's the one you are asking me about. That is what he has. I'm asking, compared to others, we, how, we, how do you feel there, there is a, there is a, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 Ahmed, uh, Bola Tunubu, <laughs> there is, uh, Abu Bakar, uh, Atiku Abu Bakar. There is yeah, a host of others. So those tickets, that are in, the lawyers will say they are in, incurably defective. And there's Robbie Kongo. Nigeria so, should not go forward. Look, let me tell you something. The fundamental problem of Nigeria today is political mismanagement. The mismanagement of Nigeria diversities, right? The basis for nationhood, you know, when you destroy it rather than build it up. Mm. That is the main problem we have. Those seekers that you have mentioned are completely, that is what they, that is what they represent. Yeah. Mr. Oshuntoko, finally, yeah. in 30 seconds, there is the talk of a possible alliance and merger with the NNPP, Kwan Kwanso, and Labour Party, or there is a talk of an alliance towards this election, is that a possibility? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm not aware of it. Are you, is your party <laughs> or your candidate willing to work with any other political party? Why would you not want to work with any other political party? Why? Is there a possibility? Of course. All right. I, don't think that, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying, I don't know anything about uh, potential alliance with NMPP, but I'm just, you know, uh, as an observer, it's good. The more we all come together, the better for the country. Chief Akin Oshuntokun, the Director General of the uh, Obidati Presidential Campaign Organization and that of the Labour Party. Thank you so much indeed. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. I appreciate it so much. Thank you very much. But that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. God bless Nigeria. I'll see you tomorrow.